Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're gonna talk about how this tree pretty much scared the crap out of me when I was felling it. Okay, so as you can see, this is a, uh, let me get my big butt off of it. You can see this is just, looks like a standard poplar log, no exterior scars, no issues here. But obviously you see this uh, big section of core rot, the heart had rotted out of it. Um, but from the exterior, you could not see that. And it's things like this where you look at the outside of the tree and it looks completely normal. Uh, and then when you go to stick your saw in it, you find that surprise. In a typical fashion, it was just a standard tree. At least I thought it was cutting down. So I didn't set up a camera for it and, you know, cut down hundred trees. It wasn't like it was a big deal. As luck would have it, it wasn't an ordinary tree. It, it will help to kind of visualize where this was. You can see around here, this hillside. So I've got steep hill here, rock face here, steep hill here, and then trees here. So this, this tree is actually in a watershed. When we have a decent rain, there's a pretty nice little waterfall right here. This was a decent sized poplar, about 17 inches in diameter. So I just wanted to drop it in the meadow behind me thinking, okay, no big deal there. But I was a little nervous about being in this bowl, knowing you always cut a tree, always want to have a point of escape. And my point of escape was going to have to be come out and around. So if I'm dropping a tree this way, I got to go that way. So there wasn't 180 degrees of surrounded here of not being able to escape. So that had me a little concerned. Also large poison ivy vine right here, which I'd cut off. You can see the top of this huge grapevine. So there was a massive grapevine wrapped around the top of this tree. So I had to sever that. So there's a lot of extra weight in the top. So that uh, spooked me a little bit. And instead of just sitting here to describe it, since I didn't have the camera going, I thought I would do a dramatic retelling. So we'll share that now. Okay, so maybe that was a little too dramatic of a recreation. But anyway, you get the point. So what we had is obviously a hollow tree here. And looking at the log, looking at the stump, really no indication of a massive scar. Now, in hindsight, this little healed over spot here would have been a telltale sign. But that could have been anything. That's just been a scrape that scarred over. I had no idea that there was any core rot in this thing. What was crazy is the amount of water that was <laughs> retained in this. And see, it's still full of water. Whew, that's cold water too. So when I did my plunge cut, when I, you can see the rings of my saw here, when I plunged that in there to do my plunge cut, uh, all, of course, all that water that was above my saw came out in high pressure and just went everywhere. And it was, it was probably several gallons of water. It was definitely intimidating. It was very black. It was very uh, you know, ugly looking water. So it really spooked me and, and uh, already being being a little uh, worried about this tree falling and me not being able to have a good plan of escape or a route of escape, it really was a little unnerving at that point. I'd never really plunged one into uh, something that had that much water. I didn't know if I'd, uh, instead of cutting a tree, had killed a wood nymph or something and that was uh, its blood squirting all over the place. So that was interesting. So of course now the question, the $25,000 question is, is this bad boy worth milling? It scared the crap out of me. I got it on the ground and got all the way up here to the mill. So should we turn it into lumber or am I just wasting saw blade and gas to cut this up? Well, we're just going to find out. I have no idea how far that core rock goes, but we're just going to see what we get into. It'll be like Christmas.
All right, so we got our log squared here. And so looking at the log, obviously it wasn't a perfectly straight log. It had uh, so I have some weighing here. Uh, ended up with a, um, what did our cant end up being? It is 11 by 10 and a half. So a decent sized uh, cant out of that, but still have some weighing. You can see here on the front. I think basically all four sides have a little weighing on it. And this is, uh, I believe this is a 12, 12 footer is when I cut this, maybe even a little bit longer. Let's see. Yeah, so it's a 12 foot, nine inch log. So uh, definitely get some decent material out of it. So, yeah, the real question is, and, and of course some of you guys, some of you guys that have sawn for a while are probably grimacing saying, Troy, there's probably a reason why that tree had core rot. It could have been that something scuffed up against it and, and over, over time the heart rotted out of it, or it could be that there's a big chunk of metal in it. So uh, we may discover that. Definitely. About four inches from, from the hole that's starting here, the core, and you can see this grain discoloration uh, it's where the, the tree obviously had a little bit of a curl to it, but this, this big dark s gash right here actually has a little bit of purple in it, is uh, indicative of, of some issue here, some scarring, some dying of the uh, sapwood as it was growing out. So uh, this is just a turn. This is where the tree actually had a little bit of a, a bow in it, so that's why we see this green here. So probably not any metal or issues here, but definitely this spot right here where it's that really dark brown purplish color could be an issue but we'll see hate to trash a blade but we got it on the mill let's just keep on going Okay, here's a, here's a great example of uh, wood under stress. Look at this. Just cut through that. Cut it halfway. Skin all the way down the log, babe. Make sure that's rocking. So that's how much that's how much strain this log was under. Uh, I want to I want to go ahead and cut it in half so I could have two five and a half inch seconds uh, seconds sections. I stand them on their side, and then we can get you know uh, like a two by six out of it. But it also took us right through the heart. So let's, let's open this up and see what we see. All right. All right. So we can see our heart that's gone. Definitely punky to a certain spot. But it doesn't look like it's definitely garbage there. So yeah, it's punky all the way up to about right here. So that was roughly above my original cut. About three and a half feet of core rot there. So again, may not be worth 
cutting, but what we'll do is I'm going to stand both of these up and then come at them um, 90 degrees so we can get some two by sixes out of it. So we'll get to a section where this will be garbage. So we'll probably have two boards out of this that will be thrown away and two boards out of that. Let's see if we can stand these hateful things up. Well, I heard the telltale sound going through the, uh, as I was going making that cut. And you can see right there, there's some metal. And it even affects, so it immediately affected the blade. You can see there's actually, drop the camera down here so you can see this dip. It actually caused the, uh, the, the blade to dip and actually felt going through the rest of the log that it was, uh, the blade was trashed. So, question becomes, do we dig that out and keep on milling, hoping that's the only, or do we put this on the burn pile and say, no more? Well, obviously I could cut here and keep cutting, cut this with a chainsaw off, throw this part away and keep milling. But uh, we'll see, I'm gonna dig it out first and see what it is, see how far it goes. Now they do make metal detectors that you can purchase uh, for this very purpose, where you can uh, obviously keep track of, uh, you can, you know, scan your log if you will um, I've played around with some of those now again it's one of those deals you get what you pay for and uh, the ones I had weren't the greatest so they weren't 100% and here we go so obviously a nail there's the pointy end so the head was uh, obviously grown into the bark it was on the other log so this is probably, well, this is definitely an edge, a, a tree that was on the edge of the pasture. So that's obviously indicative of, uh, of somebody having some fence or something like that. So most likely if there's one nail, there were probably multiples. So um, I think we're going to stop there because we've trashed a blade. That blade is, I have to go look and see if it's broken teeth or anything like that. But because it, when it came through there, it automatically adjusted the the set on it, it, it screwed it all up and the sharpness of it. So uh, it kind of waggled all the way down the rest of the logs. So I knew there was something up there. So that's unfortunate, but that's why we buy blades by the 20 pack. Well, for those of you keeping score at home, this tree has now mocked me twice. So it threw up all over me when I went to cut it. And then of course it uh, tore up a blade as I began to mill it. Now we could go for the trifecta and I, for, I could forget to throw this away and it'll end up in my tractor tire. That's usually how things work around here. <laughs> so we're going, to, um, we're going to quit at this point. It's getting dark, rain is coming, haven't had dinner yet, and I've got meetings in the morning. So 
I'm sticking a fork in this project and we'll, uh, we'll mull it over and see what we want to do. This may end up being one that these beams just get tossed out or I may even cut this off and play with some shorter boards. I gotta see if I've got a need for something short two by sixes or so. Uh, but again, if there was a nail here, there's a chance there's no one further up. Now granted, this is, I left my tape, this, this is about uh, three and a half feet from where I cut the tree and the stump, if you recall earlier in the video, the stump was a little bit high. So there's probably three feet of stump. So this, this is close to being about six feet. So I'm hoping if there's any more nails there this way and not that way. All right, take care, everybody.